Good morning, good afternoon and good evening wherever you are in the world. My name is Jade and this is How to App on iOS and today we're going to be doing some photo investigation with the photo investigator. But first, today's featured artist goes by the name of S. M. Borthwick and this is After All. Hey everybody, welcome to the show, SM Borth Week right there, and um, I know that was made for the, when the Ukrainian uh, war kicked off, so uh, that's, uh, and as you always with SM Borthwick's uh, musical uh, endeavours and video clips, it's the subtlety, it's the little framed picture on the on the table, the gun sitting there, the outfit, everything was perfectly set up there you know it's the attention to detail that makes things extra special and um so th- as you guys normally d- know i normally do an artist of the week and i think i let auntie g know this week I-, I was featuring her but we've got a much shorter week this week so i just only had two artists to play two so I-, I thought it was unfair to do an artist of the week and only give them 
two songs. So I played Auntie G's new song yesterday, and I played this song today. And then next week, we'll be back to the featured artist, which will be Auntie G. Yeah, there you go. I see Auntie G's here, uh, because I did let her know we were doing a featured artist on her this week. And things changed with the show, because things change, and you got to roll with the punches. Thanks uh, for creating another cool song, uh, Scott. And I see you're here as well. Let's get rid of YouTube from here. Hope you're all doing well. I'm Jay. This is How to App on iOS. And every day we take a look at apps and stuff and things. And mental health and well-being. Uh, interviews with amazing artists. we got some really cool interviews coming up all through next month. Oh, hang on. It's next month now here in Australia. It's the 1st of June. So starting today, we got, man, got some really, really cool interviews coming up. We won't have one this week because it is the birthday celebration of the show. But uh, the next three weeks, uh, four weeks, I've already lined up the next four interviews. So that's really cool. And as usual on the weekend, I do a live stream for the opening hour, which also uh, changes this month as well, because the final Saturday for you living in the past uh, in the US and UK and, and whatnot, the fourth opening hour of each month now is a featured guest. And uh, that guest comes on and plays a 45-minute set opening for Pete Johns instead of me. It gives me the weekend off. Um, and uh, it's a new thing that will be happening. We're trialing it out right through to the end of the year. So uh, from here on in, we'll have, what is it? Uh, so, six, one, two, so about six or seven artists all the way up to the end of the year doing a featured spot on the opening hour. And it will be, it is going to be, it is sponsored by DistroKid. So it's really cool. Um, I'm excited about it. Uh, I know Hippie has the whale show, and and now I have the opening hour special guest. Uh, I don't I don't have a name for it yet. What's going to happen? But it is happening. So uh, we'll be having special guests on. I'm really excited about hosting artists on the show and giving people a platform to play live and open for the illustrious Peter Johns. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> Let's say hello to everybody here in the chat. Uh, Hello, Dave Fox, Thomas Christ, Joe and Barry Glenn is here. Well, Joe's here under the Joe and Barry Glenn nickname. Scott Borthwick is here. Hello. Uh, who else do I see? Sean Chandler. I see that both the Chandler brothers are here. And we have a premiere coming up straight after this. Uh, we'll be sending you over to their, their uh, premiere in the YouTube dump, as I like to call it. I can dump you all over there on your asses. For the premiere, and all you got to do uh, to be dumped over to the Chandler's premiere is just on your YouTube, just flick the auto play on, and um, I will automatically dump you over there as soon as this ends. And then, as soon as you get over to the Chandler's, turn the auto play off because then you'll be sent to some crap that you don't want to see. Hello, Metalhead Hippie. Hello, Auntie G. Patrick Chandler, David Collette. Hello to you. Uh, who else do I see in the magic window? The magic window, what am I talking about? Uh, to, to Russ, 88, 89. We've got a really cool show tomorrow as well. Kind of, sort of, around Russ. Kind of, sort of, maybe. Uh, I'll, we'll tell you more about that soon. Uh, if I missed anyone, I don't... Hello, Bo. I hope you're well, my friend. And um, I think I've got all of you. Got Metalhead Hippie. Boom. Boom. Um, Sai, hello, Sai, F, and good to fucking see ya. Uh, I think we've got all of you, yeah. All right. So, what are, we, what are we doing today? We're talking about some privacy. Privacy, yes. Privacy, because we don't talk enough about it, and there's not a lot of channels who talk about this stuff. And I know it's it's kind of boring, really. It really is boring. But it's something that we should be aware of and uh, should understand the way the way we take photos and videos with our devices because we're constantly doing it and our privacy every day is being put out to the public through social media, through Instagram, through TikTok because every single item that you take a photo with, be it on iOS, be it on Android, whatever it is that you're using, you are those photographs and videos are collecting data on you, very, very specific data, right down to the f actual point where you live. And uh, people put that stuff up onto social media all the freaking time. 
And uh, hello, Mark EFX. I hope you are well. And I'm not saying that everybody's going to have a stalker. I've had a few in a li- in my lifetime. And you know what? They suck. And one of them actually found out my info through this method. And it sucked. And I couldn't get rid of this piece of shit for two years. They followed me everywhere. And it was really harrowing. It was some of the, it was a really terrible time in my life. This person was an absolute psychopath. Um, so it's worthwhile to pay attention to the data that you put up online, yeah? Uh, <laughs> hello, JDL. Hello, Tom Carrera. Papa Tom's in the house. So this stuff is important. Um, so now there's a whole lot of apps that can do this on iOS. And I know if you jump into the App Store, it's going to be a sea of confusion because there's so many of them and they're all free with in-app purchases and some of them are $4.99 and some of them are $2.99 and they all promise kind of the same thing. Well, you know what? They all kind of really sort of do the same thing. And I think with these kind of apps, to be completely honest, you just have to find one that works for you. And luckily, because most of them are freemium, download to check out first, you can do so. And you can have a look at them first and then decide if you want to pay the two bucks or four bucks to unlock it, uh, to be able to remove the data or change the data. The one I'm looking at today is one that I've been using for a long time and it suits my needs. So this is not a 100% you should use this particular app. Again, they all pretty much do the same thing. But we're going to talk about what do they do today? Um, how do they do it? Why should you do it? And um, and, and and yeah, this one which is called the Photo Investigator, which I prefer because it allows you to do uh, XF uh, data removal with... Uh, Not only photos, but for video and for live photos. I know. What are live photos? Does anybody use them? Or are you like me when you take a photo and then you go back and look at it and you touch it and it starts moving and you're like, I didn't decide to choose a live photo. I must have had that setting set. Oh, look. The last 50 photos I took are all live photos. (laughs) Because it's not very clear and not Apple's camera sometimes. All right, so we'll quickly have a look at some price drops, shall we? Uh, I don't think much has changed since yesterday. Um, And there you go. I would be right. Uh, So nothing really has changed. Magellan uh, Synthesizer 2s, half price. Galileo, Cauldron. Mila 3s on sale. All of the um, these uh, Clev Grand apps are on sale. So they're all about half price. So there's a huge list of them. If there's something that you have been interested in, the Clev Grand stuff, now's the time to get them because they're all on half price at the same time. Look at them all. Every one of them. I've probably only reviewed about 10 out of all the amount of apps that they have. All righty. So let's talk about this, shall we? What is... uh, Where do we start? Do I start on this one? start on this one what is photo metadata shall we talk about it can i make this a bit bigger i can look at that i've got the skills and i can bring myself in there i am popping up from nowhere what is metadata the definition and types and relevance photo metadata is a set of data describing and providing information about rights and administration of an image so there's several sections of metadata within a photo or videos are a little bit different than photos Uh, Photos contain a a lot more data than videos. Uh, So here we say um, it allows information to be transported with an image file in a way that can be understood by other software and humans, us. Or maybe not me. Uh, The pixels of an image of image files are created, automated and capture from cameras or scanners. Metadata is stored in two main places. Uh, so internally embedded within the image, the files such as uh, JPEG, DNG, PNG, T- TIFF files, so all the different photo files, these are embedded in. Externally outside of the image file in a digital assess- assessed management system uh, or a sidecar. So we'll talk more about that. You've got descriptive information. So there's three types of of data categories. So descriptive information about the visual content. This may include headline, caption, keywords, 
further persons, uh, so uh, other people who are in the photo with you, locations, companies, artwork, products that are shown in the image. This can be done using free text or codes from controlled vocabulary or other identifiers. So you'll know when you uh, upload uh, photos to your iCloud, you take a photo in Apple Photos, sometimes it, it will put your photos in categories of friends because you've taken other photos of your friends and uh, th their photos uh, from uh, the data is collected from their photos to know who they are with facial recognition and using metadata to match up who these people are. Now, sometimes when I go through my photos, I'll see myself under somebody else's uh, like a list of all my all the other photos are right of my friend, but then I'm in there because I've got a mask on or some weird shit. So rights, identification of the creator, the copyright information, credits, underlying rights of the visual content, including model and property rights. So metadata is really good for copyright of your original material. Remember the days when people put watermarks on everything. So watermarks are, are great. And you know, if you want to do that, that's still a recommended thing to do. But within the metadata of your photographs, original photos that are taken, all of the dates are added to it and where it was taken on what phone. So you have proof of photos that you have taken. Now, what got me interested in actually doing a show on this <clears throat> was watching the uh, Johnny Depp and Amber Heard uh, trial because they there were two days specifically of the trial where they were bringing up uh, the Johnny Depp's team were putting into question Amber Heard's uh, photos because the metadata had been altered. And that's what they'll bring into question, that these weren't original photos. And they could tell from the metadata and the EXIF data that these photos had been moved from the iPhone that she'd been using to record every single thing that Johnny Depp did to uh, put them over to a Windows computer and they had been altered because every alteration is saved as metadata. So that got me you know, thinking maybe we could do a show on this and talk about it. Because I've been using this particular app we're going to look at today for many years. I've been doing this for a long time. Uh, hello, Bear, what is happening? Good to see you. Uh, so that's what got me thinking about this. So you've also got administrative stuff in here as well. So this is creation date and location, instructions for users, job identifiers and other details. It is important that the metadata stored in an image file stays with the image. Metadata is essential for identification and copyright protection. Metadata are also key for smoothing workflow, easily finding digital images via search, online or offline, and tracking image usage. So this is what Apple uses to make your Photos app work so well. To, uh, so well, that's probably a stretch. Doesn't always work well. So now metadata changes too. So as soon as you take a photo on your uh, iPhone, let's just skip over here. As soon as you take a photo on your iPhone, the metadata is attached to your photo. But then what happens if you are storing photos automatically to your iCloud, that photo is uploaded to iCloud and as part of the metadata changes because it's it depends on how you have set up your iCloud. Now you'll see in your your settings of your Photos app, you can decide to send up uh, the full co uh, quality version of the photo and then keep the lower res photo on your phone to save up space. So this is essentially creating two different photos. So the metadata changes within these photos. If you send it to another app and open it and change it, any filters that you add to it, these things change. So there is a paper trail. It's almost like the blockchain. We're not going to talk about the blockchain because that's really complicated. And even photo metadata is complicated enough as it is. So what is XF data? So we are doing a little bit of an educational thing today because just diving in and showing you a bunch of numbers within the photos probably won't make a lot of sense. So EXIF is short for exchangeable image file, if you ever wanted to know that. A format that is standard for storing uh, interchange information in digital photography image files using JPEG compression. 
Almost all new digital cameras use EXIF annotation, storing information on the image such as shutter speed, exposure compensation, F number, what metering system was used, if a flash was used, ISO number, date and time when the image was taken, white balance, auxiliary lenses and were, uh, uh, that were used in, for resolution. Some images may even store GPS information so you can easily see where images are were taken. So as you can see, that's a lot of data going on there, especially GPS stuff. And uh, hopefully you'll understand now how Apple do their magic within their photos app, because all this data is collated. Uh, then you, you have like a map section where you can find photos by location in your photos app. So we're on a website here called xfdata.com. There are quite a few websites that can do this. And you can see here, you've got a choose file, no file selected. You can do this on a whole bunch of websites. You can upload a file or just an image URL and it will bring you back the information that is within the photo. So you already have websites that do this. The dodgy thing about this, like anything, this is some random third party called exifdata.com and you're uploading an image to these people with all your data. It's free, but remember, when things are free, normally means you're the product. So where does that data go? I don't know. <laughs> Do you take the gamble? Whatever. Tom Carrera says, holy crap, I'll never take another photo. <laughs> wow. That's why we're doing this today, because you can remove XF data. It is totally up to you to remove it. Um, so there you go. That is what XF data is. It's good to know this stuff anyway. Um, I love this, this, uh, website here, uh, finding photo metadata, a guide for the rest of us. <laughs> they may as well call it a guide for the stupid. Cause I feel stupid reading about all this and going, huh? <laughs> a picture's worth a thousand words. It says here and the metadata of a picture is worth millions, absolutely millions. So the extensive metadata attached to digital photos gives users a chance to sort, store, and understand the files in their photo library. Um, it is interesting when I go through photos too that I've found photos still in my library that were taken with my iPhone 4. Uh, iPhone, uh, uh, yeah, is that it? 4, 4S, I think. So I still have photos in my library that are from my iPhone 4S. And you can see the difference in quality. It's important uh, uh, to be able to locate and access this information. This article explains everything. So what is photo metadata? We've talked about that. What an awesome photo of that dog. Dogs wearing clothes. You can't go past it. It's magical stuff. Um, how to access photo metadata. So you can do it on all platforms. This isn't just like, uh, you know, an iOS thing. Uh, <laughs> Dave says, I'm glad I kept my instant Polaroid. I thought that's because you shot a lot of porn, Dave. You're getting rusty, Peppy. <laughs> All right. Uh, locate. Uh, so you can do this in Windows, and it's really easy. Uh, you can go to click, right click on your properties of your photo and scroll down, and there is a section down here. There it is, attributes, where you can find all this information. Um, so that's another story. <laughs> So you can find the details of it within Windows as well. This is this has been around for the longest time. I mean, you can it, with music files, you can find the attributes of music files, video files as well. So why not photos? For Mac users, if you've ever wanted to know, because Mac's always a little bit different, they've got to be using Finder, locate and open the intended digital file image, highlight the file, and use your mouse or keyboard and press Command that. Command I, I think it is. Um, this will result in a new window with relevant details. So you can do it kind of sort of in the Photos app as well. Should I edit photo metadata? This is the thing. It, it's like everything. It, it's individual choice. Depends on how paranoid you are with putting things on Facebook. Yeah, how privately locked down your pages. But remember, it's really easy for somebody to take a, a screen capture of your photos and all this stuff. So uh, there are many reasons people want to edit their metadata of digital photos. Some do so because of an error, because that happens too. 
uh, because we know uh, technology is not perfect and it makes uh, issues. There are issues with it. I have some photos that I took in the US, but they show up in the middle of the ocean. Uh, who, who knows? It may be, and that depends on when you took the photo, how many satellites were above your head when you took them because this is taking GPS information. Right, so it's like when I fly my drone. Every time I turn it on, I can't just shoot it off into the air. I've actually got to wait until there are enough GPS uh, satellites flying over the top of me. And once I hit fifteen, it's good to go. If there are only eight, I'm going to have a, a very light signal coming in. So you can get incorrect information. You can just get incorrect hashing from your phone, possibly because you've got too many apps on your phone. There's not enough memory on there. So the when you take a photo, the computer's taking its time to render the photo and errors happen that way. Uh, where was I here? Um, others may just want to remove metadata from photos. Yeah. Sometimes a user just needs to edit metadata because of missing fields or unsatisfied parameters. For example, the data doesn't include things like the title, which may be only known to the user. There are also users who wish to hide key details of images before uploading them to social media platforms. That's the one reason I'm talking about it today. Uh, whatever the reason, the chances are uh, there will be a time when you need to switch up and add a few data points. So I think we understand it a little bit here. So uh, there's really not much more in this. Let's talk about the one we're looking at today. So I didn't want to close that. So let's just jump over here and I need to make this point as well. So here we are on uh, App Slice. Now the one I'm looking at today is the Photo Investigator. So it is free, but in saying it's free, you can only look at your data within there. You can't edit it yes you can't edit it so you've got to pay the uh, in-app purchase so as i said there's a reason i've chosen this one i've used it for a long long time it suits my need there are lots of other ones they all do the same thing at the end of the day some look better than others that's up to you um so as you can see when i put in the photo investigator for a search here look how many others it just comes up with six at least and this one here xf viewer um, for $2.99, I think you can edit. Yep, you can easily view, edit, and remove. So this one's a bit cheaper. And even if I uh, click on here, click on the App Store for this, you will see a mountain of them at the bottom. If I go to the bottom here, look at them all. And they're all get, get free, get free, get free, get free with in-app purchase. They're all in-app purchases. Every single freaking one of them. So I think that's... That's the deal you're going to see uh, with these. So my, my advice is to, you know, download the free ones, see which one works. I recommend this one just because I think it looks nice. And it's got some pretty high ratings. It's been around for a really long time. It's really old, this one. Um, and yeah, that's, I think I first downloaded this about seven years ago. Yeah. Uh, did I see... Uh, Leela's here. Hello, Lord Reality. Hello, Jim Shannon on Sounds. Welcome to you. So yeah, this one's free, but um, the in-app purchase says for me seven ninety nine. So I think that's I'm guessing for you guys about four ninety nine. Um, if you're a loyalty, <laughs> if you're a loyalty unlock, you've had this for a while on your iPad or iPhone. I think you get it for half price for like two ninety nine. I think that's the deal. Anyway, as I said. You don't have to stick with this particular one. So let's open it up and see some stuff. Now, I've got to be careful with this today because I don't want to like give up info. So this is what you see on your uh, main screen. Pretty boring stuff. A big, a big magnifying glass. Let's focus on the top up here. So you have... Uh, and a little settings section. You've got feedback support. So if you want to send some support to the, uh, ask for support from the developer, you can share, rate. There's an FAC, more apps, and you can restore your purchase if uh, you need to do so. Nothing too interesting over there. 
But this is where the magic happens. So you see this little arrow telling us, press me, press me, press me, press me. Cool. Let's press you and see what happens. So immediately you are taken to your photos and videos and you can start adding stuff from here. And if you scroll down, you'll see uh, you've got things like the normal stuff that you would see in your photos ads. So video selfies, the way things are separated. But down the bottom here, we've got GPS photos and no GPS photos. So that's, what's all that about? So a lot of screenshots don't have stuff like that. So it, you can actually go through your no GPS photos. And if you wanted to, if you find a group of them that you want to actually group together and put uh, geo locations on there, you can do so as well. So down the bottom here, we have our, there's three sections, albums, photos, which takes you just directly to photos and a map. And here on your map, this gives you a whole wide world view and shows you all the places you've been to take photos. So if I scroll around, you'll see some of the places and some of these will be wrong because I certainly haven't been to Egypt. Not in the last <laughs> 10 years at least. I certainly haven't been to Egypt, but maybe I, I uh, took down, I copied a photo of somebody from Egypt. So, you know, I wonder what that photo is. I'm too scared to click on it. Um, it's somebody kissing a snake. There you go. I don't know why that's on here. But there's somebody kissing a snake. I don't know who the fuck that is. But there you go. They were probably in Egypt when they did it. See, they didn't change their XF data. Silly Billy. Uh, <laughs> what else? There's one over here. What's this? There's two over here in London. So there's a one in, uh, what's this? I don't even know. It's Psy! Psy! <gasps> There's Psy! Uh, so uh, I must have, I got that photo for him when I did his interview. There you go. He sent me that photo. And there's XF data everywhere. Look at this stuff. I don't, uh, so we've got this whole world thing. We've got uh, some stuff in Thailand. There's probably all these photos when I was in Chiang Mai. Yep, so there's me at the Elephant uh, Conservation Centre when I went and hung out there for like, a, I went on a huge expedition and had my own elephant and stuff and got to take it out to the jungle and ride it around. It was really cool. So all this stuff has uh, data on here for my holiday. And I'm sure I took a whole lot more videos than this, but I don't think I have them on this uh, computer. So... Really interesting stuff. You've got another one here. There's a, so here's another elephant one, which is... Oh, this was somewhere else too. This was at a different elephant place we went to. Oh, no, it's the same same place. So this is this, this whole area of the elephant uh, thing that we went on, this expedition. It was huge. So there you go. Uh, those, those photos were back from 2011. So all that stuff is still still there. Don't sorry, I won't put your address up or anything like that. <laughs> um, I'm sure when I hit Australia, look at all these. So there's heaps of stuff here for Australia. Melbourne. And look, as you zoom in, it gives you closer identification of all these photos that were taken in Melbourne. So I'm sure there's like heaps of taken when I was living in Paran. Um, heaps when I was and so there's heaps of Sydney photos there should be because I lived in Sydney for a long time there we go well there's 300 odd photos look there's even one out here in the ocean what's this one <laughs> that's when I was drowning that's when I was drowning no this is an aeroplane here so this was uh, when I was flying back into Sydney on a on a flight I can probably check this out I can probably play it I'm guessing it's a flight. <laughs> Looks like an aeroplane. Yeah, it is an aeroplane. Look at that. This was me shit scared, thinking I'm going to die. <laughs> but how amazing is that? I mean, the GPS even has this data from an aeroplane getting ready to fly into Sydney. So it, it remembers all this stuff, yeah? And look, there's stuff all over uh, Sydney here. So Hornsby... All the way over here, there's just so much stuff. Where's this one? Cowan. I bet this is on a train. This looks like 
Oh, gross. That's the stalker who I used to have. <laughs> that's the cunt I couldn't get rid of. <laughs> oh, man. <sighs> so there you go. There's uh, photos everywhere. Let's get out of Australia. God, I've even got some up here. Maitland, New South Wales. So there's uh, Adelaide. So we got some Adelaide photos. What's over here in Adelaide? <laughs> I'm playing a risky game today. All right. So this was my uh, trip to hang out with Pete. There's the tracksuit man. There's the tracksuit man. Remember, remember him when I was in Adelaide? <laughs> the tracksuit man. <laughs> Look at that tracksuit. <laughs> Wow, wow, you think the tracksuit's bad. Look at the hair. Holy shit. Shall we have a look at the hair? Look at that. Look at that hair. Velour man. Yeah, that was a velour tracksuit. He was staying in my hotel. <laughs> Let's look at the XF data on this shit. Who would fucking wear that, man? Who would wear that? So, now that we're in a, in a photo, <laughs> here's all your information. So, you've got these tabs across here. Oh, man. Here's your info. Uh, so you can see original file name. You've got your iOS file name. You've got the file size, the image size, what format the photo is. <laughs> then you, you can click over here to your GPS. So it shows you exactly where it is. This was the hotel I was staying at. There you go. Look at that. The address and everything. 76 Hindley Street, Adelaide, South Australia. Creepy stuff, man. Creepy stuff. Uh, then we've got the time and date. Yeah, so uh, it's one of the reasons I like this app. I like the, the pictures. I like the uh, the little calendar and the clock. I like that kind of stuff. Then we have aperture, stuff like that. What photo it was taken on, the ISO, uh, the shutter speed. So all that kind of stuff. And then you can actually add captions and stuff to this. Super cool. All right, so how do we edit this stuff? Because if you uh, just have the free version, you can pretty much just view all this stuff. You can view it here like this, go through it all. And then you can click this little metadata and you can view it from here. You won't be able to edit or remove if you haven't paid for it. So if we hit view all, here you get a whole breakdown of everything. So you'll notice uh, with the XF data up here, some of these have arrows pointing off to the side. So if we click on this, this gives us aperture value, brightness values, color spacing. I mean, it gets really deep, yeah? So if, if the flash was happening, the exposure time, the lens make, I mean, it even tells you the lens make. Offset times, pixel dimensions, all this kind of stuff. So if it had a white balance, we can get out of there. Uh, you've got this XF aux uh, stuff. So I don't know what that's for. Sometimes it's populated. I'm not an expert on all this stuff, remember, folks, as you clearly know. Opening Maps. So what's really good about this app, too, is if you don't have Apple Maps, or this can get data from a whole different bunch of different mapping services, which is uh, pretty cool. So here we are. Uh, the You've got <laughs> your latitude, your longitude. Pretty creepy, man, to know all this stuff is in here. You can... Uh, Opening Google Maps, Apple Maps, or a GPS location. I was, uh, I was thinking of something wrong with my headphones. It's rain. The rain is so loud here at the moment. So you can open these up and get directions to this place straight away. Let's try that, Sh shall we? Let's see where this hotel is. There it is. That's where I was staying. At uh, the Skeezy, what was it called? The Uni Lodge. The skeezy uni lodge with the, the weird man in velour tracksuits. Yeah? Fun stuff. <laughs> All right. So uh, we'll get out of there. You've got all this uh, this uh, data here, which is collected by this machine data, which is Apple data. So this stuff changes when you upload to the cloud, right? Because this is all specific Apple data. Uh, then you've got the... TIFF stuff here, which is iPhone second generation, orientation. So this is, again, stuff with uh, iOS, yeah, that how it was taken. And then you have all this information down here. So uh, it's an original. Orig if I click on original here, tells you uh, what kind of photo that it is, what's, what uh, style of photo, JPEG or whatever. 
and the file dates that it was created, all this kind of stuff. With the free version, you can hit copy and now that's copied and you can go and paste this into something if you want to keep this data. Or if we back out, here's where you can actually, uh, this works on iPhone and iPad, but I'm sure there are versions of these. As I said, there's lots of different apps that do this, yeah? This isn't the only one. So there would be just as many as there are on iOS, on Android, hundreds and thousands of them, wanting you to download for free and then pay because that's the market we live in. Uh, so you can remove data. Let's try and remove data from this image. So if I click remove, you are given these options. Save, and this will overwrite it. Save as new, so you can create a second copy, so you can keep the original if you want to put this up online. Or save as new and delete original. So we'll save as new. And now all that information, if I click across, is gone. No data. Look at that. Everything is deleted except for the format, the file name, and the image size. And now it has created its own album called Investigator. So when you go into your Apple Photos, all of the photos that you have deleted data or edited will be in a folder called Investigator. So it makes a folder for you in Apple Photos, which is really clever. It is scary, isn't it, Sai? This is why I wanted to bring it up, because, fuck, man, like, you know, we live in the future, yeah, with all these apps, and they do amazing things, and they, they catalog our photos for us. We don't have to think about it, because we can just be mindless zombies. But the amount of data that it takes to do that is a very complex internet web that is woven to be able to do it. So it's better to be in the know and understand a little bit, uh, just so you can save yourself, yeah? Because this can, like, cause anxiety once you start looking at this shit. All right, so uh, we've, we've altered that. Let's go back out of here and go back to our world. Oh, uh, where were we? Here we are. We'll, we'll use another, we'll find another photo here. Since uh, we're in uh, Adelaide. Maybe we'll do one in the U.S., La, 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 la. Let's travel, shall we? Let's travel. We're traveling the world. La, 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 la. That's Australia. We're going, we're all going on a summer holiday. So here's my trip to America. And you can see I've been to a heap of places here. Like Chicago, San Francisco, Los Angeles, Houston. I've been to Houston. What did I do in Houston? Shall we find out my, my two photos in Houston? What have we got? Me in a toilet and me at a bar. <laughs> Fucking hell. Fucking hell. There you go. Drunk in the, in the toilet. <laughs> Lurking in the toilets. <laughs> Funny story about this. Uh, really weird. When I was in Houston airport, I was on the phone to my friend saying how scared I was being in Houston, being a trans person, because that was at the time during the whole bathroom trans toilet debate. Should we let these humans pee in safety or should we make them piss in the street? And so I was really nervous about going into the bathroom. And this little old lady heard me on the phone chatting to my friend saying how nervous I was. And when I hung up the phone call, she looked at me and went, if you'd like me to come into the toilet with you and hold your hand, I would gladly do it. And I was like, what the fuck? That was the first person I met in America. So don't believe what you hear about Americans being weirdos. All right, let's take this photo. Here I am at the bar with my <laughs> scotch and dry waiting for a connected flight. Um, and you can see here it is. So it's, it's telling us here we are at uh, George Bush Airport. There you go. Look at that. Tells you, look exactly where I was, drinking. How creepy. How creepy is that? That is so creepy. Um, go back. Uh, it was the 23rd Thursday, 2016. All this information's here. So what else can we do with this? We can actually edit this stuff. So you don't have to go in and delete all of the stuff. Uh, all right. So if you hit edit, you get all of the information in one page here. So you've got the date. Now I can, and you've got a bin here next to each piece of information. So you can choose to delete certain parts of it, or you can edit certain parts. So if I go in here to edit, now 
I can take this photo and I can move the little point to wherever I want. Look, I can say that I was, where can I say? Let's go to somewhere really friendly in America. Um, so there's New Orleans. Let's, let's go all the way down here to Miami, shall we? I'm in Miami now. There we go. Done. So hit done. Now I'm in Miami. So you can easily change this stuff. You can change the date as well very easily. Just touch on it. And you've got these little sliders, so you can change the date wherever you'd like to go. Android users don't get the option to share their sensitive metadata with the world. Uh, well, when you upload something to Facebook, you're sharing everything. That's what it's called social media for. Um, so here you can change the aperture if you like as well. And all you need to do is just click on it. You just click on it and you can delete whatever you want and you can put anything in there. So um, in Apple here, you can change the make and camera. You can do all that kind of stuff. Uh, you can change all the metadata. It's really easy. Just open up each section, change the longitude, latitude. You can make up your own phone. Uh, you don't get the option not to share is what I said. Ah, sorry. Sorry. So you can change all this stuff. It's super easy and it's worth your time to do so. So let's, um, I'm going to discard the changes of this because I uh, won't bother doing that. But what I also want to cover too is you can change um, videos as well. So we can go into a video here. Let's find something that's not my house. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Um, I think we're going to have to go back somewhat to find something uh, where I was maybe living in Sydney or something like that. We can do that. Look at all these videos and necessary. All right, here's one. So here's the Hula Hoop Man. I love the Hula Hoop Man. This guy used to perform at a pub we all used to go to drink at. And all he would do was stand there dressed as a clown with a Hula Hoop. The scariest clown I've ever seen. <laughs> Here we go. There he is. And we nicknamed him Pedo Clown. Because... <laughs> I don't know about you. I can't play the music because I get a copyright claim, but the music is, you spin me. <laughs> there he is. There's Pedo Clown. What's going on, Ivan? So, you want to see Pedo Clown again? <laughs> what a weird character. <laughs> That's all he did for hours and hours and hours and hours. Just stood there with that stupid shit-eating grin, spinning his hula hoop around his hips. So, let's choose this. This photo has no information. Well, there you go. This one actually has none. <laughs> Fucking pedo clown. Uh, <laughs> can we go back? Let's see if I can find one. Maybe this uh, wonderful soup that I had. This, I, I don't know what this was taken on. Let's see. So here we go. This uh, video was taken in Sydney at Chinatown. Uh, here we go. If I zoom in, there you go. So here we are at Chinatown in Sydney. So I was having a wonderful uh, laksa or some, some shit like that. Some wontons, stuff like that. It has all the data in it. So it was uh, 2014. Uh, it tells you it's a MOV file. And again, we can go in and edit all this stuff here. Super easy with photos. So you can do it with photo, uh, videos as well as photos. And if we jump out of here... You can also do it with live photos. So these are live photos. Um, let's find maybe my pet rat. Should we do that? There's my pet rat. <laughs> Mr. Bungle, this is my old pet rat who passed away. <laughs> so this is a live photo. And as you can see, you can get rid of the metadata here. There's my old address. It's not correct. But uh, yeah. Definitely cool to remove sensitive data from your images, photos, all that kind of stuff. Oh, man, I miss Mr. Bungle. What a beautiful little rat she was. Yes, she was gender confused, just like me. Because if I have to deal with it, so does my pets. <laughs> all right. So there you go. Uh, how about if you screenshot someone's photo? That's an interesting thing. I'm, I'm not, I, I, I don't want to do it now, Russ, just in case I screenshot it. And then bring it up, and then all my information's on this video. So um, I'll have to, what I'll have to do is uh, do a catch up, or maybe I can just do this. What if I just um, do this? 
We'll take a screenshot of that. Okay, done. Now I'll just do this. We'll let that save. And I'll just do it off screen. So I'll tell you what happens. Um, photos. Open. No location. There you go. Let's bring it back. So I just took a screenshot of that video. No location. It has a time, but it has no location. See? If we hit metadata and hit view all. Uh, we've got an identifier, date created, so you, it tells you that it was taken on an iPhone. There's no GPS data on there. But the thing is with this as well, you can edit and you can add location data as well, yeah? So because it's it's taking a screenshot, it doesn't do that. So there's a good point. So thanks, Russ, for bringing that up. All right, well, that's about it for this app, I think. There's really not much else you need to know. So you can go in there, you can you know edit stuff, you can delete stuff, very easy. And you can add your own shit to it as well, yeah? Um, so we got a bit of time. I padded that out as much as I could because we've got coming up, folks. Make sure you've hit your auto... Uh, your your autoplay on your wherever you're watching this show. So as soon as I end this show today, it'll dump you all over into the Chandler's channel, so you can watch the show directly from there. Yeah, you could do that as well too. That's a that's another idea. You see, you probably don't even need to pay for it. Just screenshot everything, and just uh, <laughs> just use a screenshot. There's another idea. We've we've worked out something else. So, look, there's always alternatives with iOS as well. So, I just thought I'd show you. Um, oh, the other thing, too, before I do close out, you can do batches, yeah? So, you can select a whole bunch of photos. If we go back here to the map, and if I grab these two photos here, you can actually hit select, and you can select batches of photos, and then bring those into it and you can do like as many photos as you want and you could batch those all together and add a GPS location if these are all taken at the same place but some of them were missing the GPS location data or you, or you want to fix them all together say you had a whole collection of photos 30 photos you can do this as well so you know the, today's show really wasn't it was about an app yeah obviously but more so it was about understanding a little bit more not much more because i'm not really a good teacher at this stuff was understanding how xf data works how much there is on your photos and just just to be aware just to have it in the back of your head you know uh and not to panic don't freak out don't <laughs> this the world's not ending but you know just have an understanding it's better to to know so let's we've got a few minutes before we uh, jump out of here what's happening in the next couple of days Speaking of photos, let's jump over here because oh, you're probably going to see some secrets here, but whatever. So tomorrow we are doing a really cool show I'm looking forward to on another Warts episode on courage. So I, I'd love you all to come and join me uh, for this. Uh, as usual, I'm going to be asking you questions about courage. Uh, I'm going to be telling you a little bit about my courage, and I'm going to be dedicating this show to somebody special tomorrow. Because uh, it's it's uh, going to be Liz's birthday, which is Russ's wife, and if I if there's anybody I can think of over the last year who has courage, it is Liz. So I'm going to be dedicating this show tomorrow to Liz. Uh, we all know she's been battling uh, cancer for a, a good time now, and um, the good news is that she is absolutely cancer free. And uh, that is just fucking awesome. So I want to dedicate tomorrow's show to Liz, and I want to I want us all to share stories about the things uh, you know, things that we've dealt with, and how we found the courage to get through this kind of stuff. Yeah, I think this stuff's important to talk about. That's why I do these warts episodes. So hopefully you can join me for that. It's going to be a really interesting show, and hopefully you will come along and share your story like you all kindly do many times. And then the day after that, my friends, it is finally episode 600, uh, two years exactly to the day this show kicked off. We're going to have a bunch of special guests, more than you could poke a stick at. I think I've got like 14 guests lined up. 
So please come and join us for that. It's going to be two hours of just hanging out with some of your favourite people or maybe your not-so-favourite people like Russ. <laughs> but, so hopefully you come and join me for that. And um, I just want to put it out there too before we go. Uh, also... I have secured a really cool interview for next month. So next week's interview will be uh, Lurreality. Leela will be coming on the show. So I'm really excited to have Leela on the show. But I want to bring this up too because this month uh, in June, I have a massive interview sponsored by DistroKid. And that is with Jack Flash. And uh, yesterday he had a face reveal over on uh, Metalhead Hippies channel. Well, on my show, he's going to be live and in person, and we're going to be talking about his music and everything Jack Flash. So I'm really excited to have this happening in June, amongst many other really cool interviews that are coming up. All righty. Guys, thanks for being here today and every day and all your constant support. Uh, why was your picture in the middle of the screen, says Papa Tom? Don't you remember, Tom, during Ron's show? When I put up that picture of you with a love heart. See, this is how quick I work, Tom. I had to find this picture. Then I had to open it up in an image app and put a love heart on it so I could put it up on the screen during Ron's show. Tut, tut. See, it's just still there. I'll delete it, don't worry, after I've finished masturbating to it. Relax, Tom. <laughs> All right, guys. Man. What the hell? <laughs> I've got photos of you all on my on my iPad because I interview so many of you for fuck's sake. All right, guys. Thank you so much for always supporting the channel and joining me for these shows and all that jazz. Please stay around for the Chandler Brothers new song. I was lucky enough <laughs> to uh, <laughs> master this great track. This is going to be the premiere. So I'll leave you. Set your autos so you can be dumped over there right now. Dumped over there <laughs> and i'll see you tomorrow for the wart special on courage all righty guys do the things that make you happy mistakes make you better and remember we all rise together goodbye